My guest today is Allie Whitley. What are we going to talk about, Allie? Oh, wow. We've got technology, community, and the 50-plus market. So much to get into. Let's do it. Welcome to the National Association of Realtors Center for Realtor Development Podcast, the show that brings you on the go learning about today's top real estate topics with your host, Monica Neubauer. To get more information about the courses discussed here, as well as monthly course specials, visit our website at learning.realtor. And now, on to the show. Welcome to the Center for Realtor Development Podcast, the podcast for realtors all about real estate. I'm Monica Neubauer, your host. We have conversations about technology a lot, in all kinds of various forms. And I'm glad to say that it isn't just something that, well, some people are amazing with and others, well, they're still running away from it. We're not having those conversations anymore. Everyone, as a consumer first, is adapting to the areas of tech they need, whether in their work or in their life. And yet we are also business owners. We want you to have the best tools that will benefit you and benefit your clients. Allie Whitley from Akron, Ohio, is with me today to talk about working with our mature clients. The Senior Real Estate Specialist designation is an amazing class that the Center for Realtor Development offers through your associations. It's also available on learning.realtor. Here's what I say about this class. This is the class we all need for life because what we discuss in that class are things you need to know but didn't know you needed it. And that's because we discuss the technicalities of senior living, reverse mortgages, estates, taxes, and more. I had a conversation with a friend of mine just yesterday about those things in their estate planning. Today, though, we're discussing helping our mature clients get established or reestablished into community and how technology is helping our mature clients be connected in the ways that they want to be connected. And I'm going to let Allie introduce herself. Thanks for joining us. My guest today is Allie Whitley from Akron, Ohio. Welcome, Allie. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate being here. Um, My name is Allie Whitley. I am a realtor with REMAX Crossroads in Ohio. I am the president-elect of Ohio Realtors. I am an educator, and I love all things education, and I am happy to be the chair of the Emerging Business and Technology Forum for NAR this year. Well, I'm excited to hear. We'll talk a little bit about that emerging part as we get closer to the end of our of our session, because I'm always excited about emerging new things as well. Um, but today, so we're going to discuss our senior community. And I put that in quotes, senior, because uh, it's kind of a weird thing. People don't like to be called senior, um, but they sure do like a discount, don't they? <laughs> well, isn't senior getting a lot closer to us? Uh, yes. you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, wait, I actually have an example. So <laughs> when I am looking at the, the word senior, it's kind of funny because the, the senior real estate specialist designation actually targets the 50 plus market, which you and I know that, you know, I tend to think more of my parents in that situation than me, but I I am over 50 and I do recognize the value of some of the things that we teach for me in my life and certainly communicating with my family. Um, And I will tell you, I I am planning to take advantage of the free admission to my county fair for senior Oh, that's fantastic. (laughs) I'm like, $14 $14 with my husband, $28. All right. I guess I'm free on Sunday afternoon <laughs> to go to the fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> it's so funny. I actually saw that and I was like, oh, something I actually care about taking advantage of. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, you know, we have a group in my neighborhood. They call themselves the 50 plus community. And So it's meant to be for people who are, I guess, kind of empty nesters. And I've been to it a few times, but I always think of it as people who are older than me. And they may only even be one or two years older than me. I mean, if that, some may even be younger than me. And it's this weird mindset we have with senior and being over 50. And, you know, I'm just content to live in that space and say, I am what I am. I'm healthy. I'm I'm working, I'm having a great time. And that's what we talk about in the SRES class, isn't it? It's all about how you feel. 
Yeah. And that's so interesting to know because a a person of the same age could be in a very different um, lifestyle than another person. And so it it really depends on your activity level, your health level, how you really feel about yourself and your ability to have activities. Um, So it's so interesting. You might see, you know, a really young 60 year old um, or a really old 50 year old um, that, you know, has different ways that they like to um, interact in the community. Well, we have lots going on in our community. So give us a couple of examples of how you see kind of, again, the quote, let's do the people over 50 (laughs) engaging in your community. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it again, it really depends on your, um, you know, what what you like, what each person has in their interest. But there are tons of social groups in my area that people can be involved in. Um, in at the Akron area, the Akron area recreation and parks system has all kinds of programs for those over, you know, fifty five or those over sixty five or starting even younger. Um, cards and games that they have. They have uh, day trips that they'll take to many different community events or uh, art, uh, museums, shows, fitness, lots of different fitness opportunities for people. Um, And we can also look to libraries or the colleges for talks on seniors' issues. So I saw recently that there was a talk going on for taxes for seniors and how to plan for retirement and estate planning. Um, And we see people going and gathering there and, you know, maybe then having a social hour afterwards, which is really kind of cool. You know, you mentioned the colleges and universities. One of the things that I've been thinking about, I know that we have a lot of colleges in the Nashville area and some of our listeners are, you know, the college is the center of their town. And a lot of the colleges are offering Um, auditable classes. They're offering adult education for a very low price if you want to go just to get the education and not get the degree. And I know when, when I decide to slow down, whenever that will be, I'm all over that. Yeah. I have several clients and relatives that have taken advantage of that. You know, maybe someone had a real interest in something particular and and their job took them in a different direction. And so now as they're retiring, they can start to take those classes that they really thought that they would enjoy. I know people that are out there taking law classes. Uh, They didn't choose to be an attorney in their career. And now they're taking law classes just for the interest in it. So it's pretty cool. Well, and the thought that, I think too about doing that is then I'm going to be with people who are younger. So I'm going to get more insight into them as well, which I'm always seeking to do that. So, um, well, let's talk about, you've got a client. I've got a client. We've got somebody who is, whether they're actually in some state of retirement or still fully working, they're moving to a new community, but they're empty nested. So they may have that little bit of more time to develop some hobby or to do some entertainment. How do you encourage agents to provide that kind of community information for their elder clients coming into town? How do we find those situations? Yeah, absolutely. Typically, I have a conversation with the client coming in and I ask them, what are their interests? And I find out um, what's their activity level? What types of things do they like to do? And then, for instance, if someone tells me that they are into fitness, then I'm going to look at something like the Silver Sneakers program, um, which is a national program that they can find out if there are um, communities in or uh, opportunities in their community for live classes. Um, But if they belong to that Silver Sneakers program, they can also do things online at home if they choose to do that. So that's one of the things that I look at. Um, If they tell me that they like hiking, I go to the park system and I pull out, you know, information for them on what types of uh, programs they have for people to gather and go on group hikes and things like that. So art museums, uh, the libraries, all different types of opportunities in your community that you can find some of these um, senior-led or over 50-led programs. And it's really not hard. And we're going to move into talking about technology. And, you know, you talked about your Parks and Rec. That's huge with us, too. We even have a whole new facility that focuses on our mature adults over 55. And um, they had a concert, which is kind of funny. I I found this concert, actually, I bought it as a resale ticket from somebody on next door. And it was a, G- a Billy Joel cover band. Oh, how awesome. They were really great. So they were at this facility. And when and the 
the concert happened to be just was the availability of the artist. It was an odd time at 430 on Sunday afternoon. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> I like it. And uh, <laughs> but we got there. And because this was the theater in this um, elder community, it was all older people. And the timing was fantastic. They loved having such a great um, musical opportunity in the afternoon. And I, so I'm finding that when you get plugged into something, you find out more, more to do. Um, but I think as real estate professionals, if we can do some of the Google work and the pre-work and send them the links, our clients will feel better, even if they find their own path through some of these doors when they get here. Yeah, absolutely. If we have a few things available to someone and we can start to identify it for them, their interest and their, you know, uh, ability to meet people is just going to kind of explode. So they'll be able to really connect in their communities. Yep. And we want people to feel connected and we want them to be happy. But we also know we have three different generations we're looking at in this market. We've got the Gen X, we've got boomers, and we've got the silent generation. That's our mature folks later in their 70s. And if you haven't taken the senior real estate specialist designation, we talk about those in it. And they do have some different things. And we're going to move transition into talking about technology. And wow, the over 50 crowd is very diverse in technology, isn't it? It really is. It really is. So, you know, those that are in the Generation X 50s and moving forward have dealt with technology for quite some time. We're familiar with it. We're more comfortable with it. Those in the boomers and the silent generation, well, silent generation really didn't have as much uh, ability to have that technology as they were younger. Boomers use it in a different way than either the generation or the silent, but I'm sorry, the Gen X or the silent generation. And it's interesting because we as real estate professionals, as realtors, we need to help clients across any technology abilities. Um, and we need to know where they are and meet them there and see if we can help to encourage, you know, technology within their transactions or within their general lives. What can help for what can be helpful for them? Well, let's talk for a little bit about, I mean, we're making some assumptions here and we all know that stereotypes are helpful for some conversation, but don't ever over-assume things. You know, you always want to be open. And so let's start with that conversation of the older boomers and the silent generation um, who may have had some emerging technologies when they were young and in business. They're more or less curious about things. So let's talk about some of the um, challenges or benefits or what we're seeing in our older community there with technology use. Yeah, and you're you're absolutely correct. We don't want to stereotype whole groups of people. Uh, but what we're seeing across the different generations is that different generations use technology differently. Yes. Even if they're using the same technology as someone that's a millennial or, you know, someone else, they are using it in a different way. Yes. And, and so um, the really cool thing about technology for our silent generation or for our older boomers is being able to continue to connect with their friends and their families, even when they are not going out as much as they used to go out, um, or if they're away from their families, if their families are living out of state, still able to connect, video chats, um, having the ability for social media, all of that is so very useful to someone, you know, really keeping that connection um, and feeling that they're kind of in the know in their community and in their family. It's great to see our elders connecting on social media because nobody's sending them printed photos in the mail anymore. Right. And, right. So, but they can be friends with all their kids and grandkids and see what's going on on social media. So we do see a lot. I think they tend to be a little bit more stalkers, um, but I see both. I see some of my mature friends. They love to comment and encourage everybody. And some, I just know, I know my dad's just a stalker. <laughs> He doesn't comment. He looks occasionally, but he's not, he's not commenting. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because people will have different um, feelings on that. And, you know, some want to really connect. And so I know that, you know, my mom and dad would contact the kids, uh, the grandkids, and they're able to see what the grandkids were doing throughout their, you know, lives. And maybe they're going to prom or going out of the country. And, and it's really able, uh, being able to connect with them. Um, but also sharing little funny jokes or stories or, you know, things on social media. So 
it, I think it's a great opportunity for people. And I see that more and more that people will use the video chats and social media to connect. Uh, but there's so many other things that they can use you know, in their lives and in their households that maybe they didn't realize in the past, but it makes it really easier for them, um, you know, to to live their daily lives. Let's drop a couple of those suggestions. What have you seen? Yeah, what I'm seeing is, uh, for instance, like doorbell, video doorbells, oh, where yeah. someone can, you know, keep an eye out on who's coming up on their porch and, you know, when they're getting deliveries and when they're having visitors, um, virtual keys or fingerprint or thumbprint locks, which I love to use myself. I think yeah. they're great <laughs> for any family, um, but, you know, where you can program multiple fingerprints or multiple thumbprints into that so that you can have your family members able to come in and check on you or bring you groceries if need be you know, diff different things like that. Um, and then certain things like, um, you know, health trackers and the video uh, medical appointments that we can have, have made it so much easier for people if you are not able to get out or if you don't have interest in, a go in going out to an appointment, you can do it right there from your computer, right there from your home. So true. And that was a great example. The, the ring doorbell. I was talking to my parents this week. And I was saying, so tell me, tell me what you think about technology. And would you like to have an Alexa that you could tell it what to do in your house? And they were both like, oh, no, I, I don't think I want an Alexa. And we started, but then she said, oh, I think I would, I love my ring doorbell. And I said, oh, you do? She said, well, yeah, I don't have any glass in my door. So if somebody comes to the door, exactly what you said. So she loves her ring doorbell. So we start, I would say this and they'd say no, and then they'd say this. And what it really came down to is when they find something that satisfies a need that they have determined, then they are thrilled to have the technology. But I think there's still something of, yeah, I don't want all of that technology. But like for so many of us, it comes in in small ways. So it's like, oh yeah, I love the ring doorbell. Oh, and this was a great little addition. Um, my my stepmom, she received for her birthday a new iPad with a keyboard. And she just loves, she loves that. And that's kind of her main computer. Well, my dad just uses his phone and it's kind of a little archaic, but you know, it works for him and he also has a laptop. So everybody has their different tools. And he said, I sure wish I could have one of those keyboards like she has. And I said, you know what? There is a portable Bluetooth key, um, keyboard. So I sent him a link from Amazon. They did a little research on it. He bought it and he has loved it. It's been so much fun for him to have with his phone. And actually now I'm remembering he has an iPad as well, but it's not one that you could connect. So he loves his Bluetooth keyboard. And so I, I think in that we should listen to what people want what would make their lives better? And then those of us who are more techie can insert what we already know. And then they love to have it because now it satisfies a need. Oh, absolutely. And that's an opportunity for us as realtors to, you know, have that knowledge and know what, what the solutions are so that if someone is saying, oh, I really wish I had, you know, X, Y, and Z, gosh, you know what, there's a product for that. Yeah. And, and then uh, we can help you know, learn, help teach them or just make sure that they have the information so that they can research it themselves and get, you know, the, the more information on it and be able to purchase that. So there's so many opportunities out there and there's so many little pieces of technology that make our lives easier. And whether you're, you know, a senior, whether you are 50, whether you're 30, um, those things that can just make our lives a little more easier and keep us more organized and, you know, it, I think there's some great technology advances out there. I think so too. And I think we just need to introduce them as we like them. I do caution a lot of the attendees to the classes that there's a lot out there. And if what I'm talking about goes over your head, then it's not for you right now. You know, we need to grab what we need and what's helpful for us. And that's true for our clients. There's so much out there. And the thing is, we don't want to bite off more than we can chew, right? So if we find that there's something that we can, you know, use and we're going to be able to be happy with um, the solutions that it's creating in our lives, fantastic. If it feels overwhelming, no, we don't need to choose that technology today, or maybe we only use a piece of it. Um, but, but that's the main thing is that don't, 
we don't want to let it feel overwhelming or become, you know, overwhelming for someone. Just use what you can use and what you're happy with and then, you know, move on. Well, let's talk a little bit about communication methods with our mature clients because some of them like email, some like text, which kind of like all ages, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We need to sit. I think what we, what we need to do is sit and talk with our clients and find out what their preferences are, just as in any generation that yep. we're working with. Um, but we need to understand that within the seniors market, uh, the 50 plus market, we may be dealing with multiple people in a transaction that are helping our clients and they may have different communication styles as well. I think we find with our mature clients, there is gosh, it's kind of interesting with our young clients, we find they don't like to talk on the phone, but with our older clients, they want to talk on the phone and they want to see you in person. And so that's really important with our mature clients. They need to see you. So if you're working with a mature client, just texting or just emailing, unless they've said that, which is a real rarity, please, please go see them in person. They need to see you. They need to feel like you're with them. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a relationship building business. We need to build the relationships in the way that the client is comfortable with that. Yes. So if we have a silent generation client and they feel much more comfortable with us in person, that is what we do. We meet in person. And then, you know, we can introduce some of the um, ability to communicate remotely or some of the technology that we use when we meet with them in person and ask them, is this something that you'd be interested in doing? So again, it's a personal preference. So a person may surprise you. You know, we never want to judge a book by its cover. <laughs> um, you know, they may say, I love texting. Are you kidding? I, you know, I learned and I love it and let's do that. Or they may say, it's not for me. I don't, I don't like texting. I don't see the screen as well as, as if I'm talking to you in person. So what we need to do as professionals is just make sure that we are finding out what our clients need, having that conversation with them, um, and identifying what would make them most comfortable and then go there. I want to emphasize something you just said. Relationship. We... That is the future of our industry. If we can't be in relationship with clients and providing that excellent customer experience, and for some, an excellent customer experience might be, I really don't want to talk to you. But in that sense, you're, you're not really developing a relationship with them. If they're going to be that, that short in all the transaction, we're still not really developing a relationship. And so that is, that's the future of this. We're a people business and we need to be connecting with people where they are, whether it's through technology or through face-to-face. -face. It's just, that's the future. Let's develop that friendship. Yeah, I believe that too. And, you know, let's, let's be honest, there's always some face-to-face -face element regardless. So even if you are um, going to communicate with someone through text or through technology, we've got the opportunity to do Zooms and, and see someone face-to-face. Yes. You know, -face. There's no emotion in a text, right? And there's no emotion in an email. And so they can't tell where you being, you know, where you smiling when you thought that, you know, but in a video, if we're able to sit and, you know, do a Zoom, we can see each other's faces. We can react to each other. Um, you can see when a client is kind of pondering that question or doesn't quite understand the answer that you gave. But when you're on a text, you can't get that. You can't get that. So I think regardless, there should always be some element of a face-to-face, -face, if at all possible. And if they tell you, you know, I don't need that, I don't want that, we do what they want to do. Absolutely. And we work with the client in the way that they're most comfortable. Um, but for our seniors, we and the, and the 50 plus, it is definitely helpful to at least have that initial conversation face to face. It's nice to have additional conversations face to face if we can, um, whether that be in person or remotely on a Zoom or a video chat. I did a Zoom call recently with a new client and I was working with the daughter. There was a, the younger husband and wife, and then the parents. And so the daughter is just my primary one and her husband is my secondary one. So the parents are engaged. They're going to be living on the property, but they're not the main decision makers. But it was so great. I said, let's have a consultation. Let's go ahead and do it on Zoom. And I could see all four of them. 
They were all there. And the one who was actually out of the shot the most was the daughter who I'm working with, but we're developing a relationship. So I love that I could see all the rest of the parties involved in the transaction. It gave me just that deeper connection to get a feel. And they also got a feel for me. And even a funny thing too, in person, it's like getting a feel for me. Uh, I've been working with a client and I'm kind of particular in their staging and we're doing this because we want to maximize their dollar and all that. Well, the parent, the parents and grandparents were at the house while we were working on the staging and I was able to come in and be witty and cheerful when they'd heard about this particular realtor who's making me do all these things in the house. So me coming in now, I was also human to the clients. So it's not just me getting their the sense of them, it's them getting the sense of me as a real human who cares about them and who wants to engage with them. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, they can see your smiling face on the video or they get to meet you in person and they get a feel for who you are. And then later, if you are using technology and it's you're sending a text, for instance, or you're sending something through email, now they can put your face to it and they see you smiling when you texted that. Yes, versus yes. Versus maybe that was short and to the point and they feel like, oh, what was that? You know, a demand rather than a friendly, hey, we need this from you. Yeah. Um, so I think there's there's all kinds of opportunities for us to use technology to connect that, to, ne to make those connections. But the face-to-face -face or the voice-to-voice, -voice, you know, there's so much um, importance in that so that people can really feel connected. You feel like you know someone when you've had the opportunity to talk to them in person. Now, you are the chair of this Emerging Businesses, and what's the committee called? Emerging Business and Technology Forum. Okay, and y'all work with the, the REACH program with NAR, right? Emerging Business and Technology, yeah, they work with um, REACH. They put together the REACH program classes each year, um, and we've had some really great opportunities and, and companies come out of the REACH programs okay. that- before you go, hold on. What is the REACH program? In case somebody's listening, they don't know, they haven't seen them at NAR. What is the REACH program? Yeah, the REACH program is a group of programs that uh, comes out of our Second Century Ventures from NAR. Um, it's the Second Century Ventures is the strategic arm, uh, investment arm of the National Association of Realtors and the um, REACH program are emerging businesses um, in technology that are coming out that we may be able to use in our industry yep. um, or to share with our our clients to, to give them more access to technology. So NAR has met with these companies and they've had some interaction and NAR has decided that the at least the finalists or however many, five or seven or whatever, are worthy of having some investment in because NAR feels like they're bringing a quality product for our members or the public we work with to the market. Absolutely. And they, uh, NAR chooses both uh, REACH commercial and residential ah. companies so that um, they can be utilized in all, you know, whether it's homes or businesses. And you have one company recently that you've been connecting with, and we're going to tell you how to find out more about these companies in a minute, but what's the one company that you feel might be specifically helpful for our 50 plus market? Yeah, the this program um, I found out about, it's called Presidio, and I found out about it recently during the last uh, convention that we had in May. Uh, they spoke at our Emerging Business and Technology Forum, and they created a digital vault that's going to be able to capture your important documents, um, anything that you have that you want to safeguard in the cloud, but then you can also share this with members of your family outside of your household. So it's really, you know, kind of a nice system. Um, they, you can have your documents in there, um, all different kinds of things that, you know, you have that you want to let your family members know where they are, you can house that on the Presidio uh, program. And we talked about earlier how it's not the same as Dropbox. I mean, I've always been kind of telling people, well, you can share your docs with your clients in Dropbox. Why, why do you think this one is better than that? Yeah, I think just the security of it. Um, they are partnering with AARP, and uh, they it is a you know fantastic new program that NAR is um, uh, looking at through our Reach program, and it's just 
I really thought it was, um, I enjoyed it. Well, you know, in listening to you talk, and maybe you were saying this and didn't, it wasn't fully extrapolated out, but I was thinking not just for us to use with our clients and they can share that information with their family. I feel like you kind of touched on the fact that me as the primary organizer in my family, I can put my documents in it. If I have an account here, I can put my family documents in it. So if I become unable to work in, you know, or, you know, God forbid, sick or die, you know, my family, all they need is that one password or they already have access to it. So that's where we can store the, you know, the one sheet of all the contact information and all of that. So it could even be something we could give, I don't know, maybe as a gift. I don't know. We're kind of still fleshing it out, I guess. Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing. It, it We can use this to safeguard some of the documents that we're using in a particular transaction. But more than that, what I really like more than that is that it is something that the, the homeowner can use or the individual can use for all of their information. So it's their their will, their insurance policies, um, their jewelry. You know, where do they keep their jewelry? What kind of vehicle, you know, do they have and, and the information for that? Emergency contacts. And then they can share the access to the system with their loved ones so that in the event anything happened, if anything happened to me, I'd be able to share that with my family so that they could take a look at that. They'd know where my insurance information is. They'd know all of the you know banking information that I have, and it can be kept in this secure cloud system. Yeah, that's an exciting program. And you know, you mentioned they're working with AARP and um, I because I get a discount on my cell service, I joined AARP. <laughs> um, but they've really got some good things going on. So I would say to our agents who work in the senior market, AARP, like NAR, is a very strong lobbying organization. They're very connected with what's going on in that community. So it might be something you want to read some articles with them, see what they're doing. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of good information on the AARP uh, yeah. site. And, you know, I don't, I am not um, a spokesperson for either Presidio or AARP, but I do feel um, that there's some great information that we can find, you know, just, just do a little quick Google search. There's some resources. And if you don't prefer either of those resources, there's other ways to do similar things. So yes, yeah, absolutely. we're not, we're not, there's no affiliate with any of these. We're just kind of sharing some things. Um, all right. We are going to wrap up and I think we've talked about a lot of really great things. Before we go, I want you to tell everybody where can they find out about these REACH programs and talk a little bit about them at NAR. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to look at um, the NAR site, you can go just do a quick search for either the REACH program or Century, Second Century Ventures. Um, and then you can see all of the different REACH programs and REACH classes um, each year that they have made available. Uh, the other thing that you can do, and I would highly encourage you to attend the Emerging Business and Technology Forums at our convention that's coming up in the fall. Um, and each year that we have one in May and in the fall, check out the resources that we have available to you at NAR with respect to technology. There's so much that we can offer our, for ourselves to use in our business, but also to offer our clients to help them make their lives easier. Yes, go see them at the expo. My favorite, going to the expo because I feel like the future has arrived in the room at the expo and you can see these reach companies. That's one of my favorite places to go find out what they're doing when I go to the expo. Um, well, thank you so much, Allie. And I wanna give you the final word. What would you like to say to our listeners to send us off? Oh gosh, thanks so much for having me here. I am so excited about the opportunities in the seniors market um, for us as realtors to share with our clients the technology that we have available at NAR and through our REACH program. Um, and I'm just, I'm just happy to be here to share it with you. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. I appreciate it. Allie Whitley. Thank you. As always, there are some great tips there from our guest. Thank you so much, Allie Whitley. Are you making plans to go this year to NAR Next, the Realtor Experience, our annual conference and expo? It's in November and it's in Anaheim this year. Have you made your plans? I hope you are. And if you go, please go and visit the Reach Companies booth in the expo. 
I love the expo so much. And stop by the Center for Realtor Development booth as well and learn about the tremendous resources offered there for you as an agent. Or if you're a broker, we can help you get the training you need for the agents in your office. The Senior Real Estate Specialist is one of many excellent offerings. And you can find out more at learning.realtor. Check out the show notes to find out more about Allie and the resources that we discussed in this episode. I'm Monica Neubauer for the Center for Realtor Development. I hope that you're having some super summer fun while you're out there fulfilling dreams for your clients. Thanks for listening to the Center for Realtor Development podcast. If you like what you have just heard, we hope that you give us a positive rating and pass along our podcast at crdpodcast.realtor to your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions or suggestions for future show topics, we would love to hear what you have to say. Just email us at crd at nar.realtor. This show is sponsored by the Center for Realtor Development, a wholly owned subsidiary of the National Association of Realtors.